turn up the volume and free your mind because this is the Humans 2.0 podcast hosted by Mark Metry. What you feed your mind every day will shape your future. Listening to this podcast will strengthen your mind, thoughts, and beliefs. Leave behind the everyday mundane trivialities of your average human version 1.0 and meta-learn your way into becoming a human version 2.0 with a new upgraded guest in each episode. Enjoy. Dave Anderson is a motivational speaker, author, business coach, and branding expert. His latest book release, Pitch, Close, Upsell, Repeat, topped the Amazon Kindle bestseller charts in two leading business categories. Dave has appeared on CNN, Bravo, VH1, and the pages of Ebony Magazine. He's worked with nationwide celebrities like Ricky Smiley, Wendy Williams, and DJ Clue. He's the author of several books and creator of the iBrandU online course experience and the Black Boys Win Initiative. Dave and I talk about his encounter with Gary Vaynerchuk, mindset, how to be an amazing podcast host, and the pillars of Dave's success. Enjoy. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is the Humans 2.0 podcast. It's your host, Mark Metry, and today I am joined by the wonderful Dave Anderson, a.k.a. the business bully. Dave, how are you doing today, man? Mark, I'm absolutely excited to be here. I feel great, man. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's a complete privilege, dude. Uh, so, Dave, I, I found you out when I was watching Gary V. I'm uh-huh. sure a lot of you guys watch Gary V. He's, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. And I, I found you out, and you were doing a podcast interview with Gary V. Yeah. And you just had this certain kind of charisma. You had this kind of vibe. You know, I reached out to you. You were gracious enough to accept this awesome podcast. And I've been watching you. I've been listening to your podcast and uh, watching some of your videos and what you do. Uh, and you know, the whole Gary funding your Black Boys Win initiative? Yeah. That, that is crazy, man. Uh, yeah. Can you just talk about that experience and, and how that was meeting with Gary and getting him to fund your initiative? Yeah, like, um, for me, it was a really, it, it was a long time coming just because what had happened, and I, and I said this when I talked to him, and there's uh, the full interviews on the Business Bully podcast, but what I said was when I did the Breakfast Club for the first time, all of a sudden, you know, like my book sales went through the roof, which is to be expected when millions of people follow you. The yeah. thing that was weird was that people kept comparing me to this guy I'd never heard of. Oh, you're the black Gary Vee. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> I'm nobody's black derivative. Who is this guy? It was, it was just a long time coming. I had done the Breakfast Club, sold a lot of books, and people started comparing me to Gary Vee, and I'd never heard of him. So I did some digging, and I said, okay, let's, let's find out what's up with this guy. And I, I reached out to him. My people reached out to him. And, you know, it took a while, like a long while. But when it happened, you know, his people were really gracious. Gary was amazing. And my whole thing was get as much information from folks as, as possible. And, you know, I had spent a lot of time creating the Black Boys Win Initiative. And I was like, you know what? I need to figure out some fundraising things that maybe I don't know. And so I was asking him about, you know, fundraising techniques, which I never got. <laughs> you know, because he said, well, how much, you know, how much, how much you uh, need to, to, to get where you need to go? So about 15 grand. He was like, I'm in. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait. <laughs> like, that doesn't answer my question, but I'll take the money. Um, Gary is, you know, he's a really good guy. And um, it was cool to be in his presence, you know, and hopefully we, uh, you know, you'll see more stuff with me and him. So I'm excited about that, too. Yeah, dude, that was awesome. Like, I didn't even know you at the time when I was watching, and I just felt so happy for you, man. I could see the joy in your eyes. It was absolutely awesome. And I'm sure meeting him was was a a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So so I want to talk about myself a little bit uh, Mm -hmm. because you've, you know, uh, the business bully, you know, you talk a lot about, you know, mindset and how people should go ahead and start their own businesses and they're, you know, in their own minds, they're holding themselves back. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, so over a year ago, personally, I was a completely different person. I had, you know, a lot of depression, anxiety issues, and I went through a mindset transformation and now it's just completely different, 180 degrees. Mm. And I've been trying to spread this message, you know, as you have too. I'm trying to spread 
positive mindset, you know, gratitude, compassion, empathy, hustle, grinding, trying to work for what you want. What, because you're a lot more experienced in this than I have. Mm -hmm. What the best way to, to try to change somebody's mindset about something? What you need to do, and mm -hmm. I, I learned this early on, you can't argue somebody's feeling. So mm. what you do is you want to try to get them to come to the logical conclusion themselves, you know, mm. because I can tell you something all day, but if I'm, I, I force you to come to a conclusion about it yourself, then you have to accept what comes from you. And mm. so let me give you an example. Um, when I sit down with clients or potential clients, they'll say, well, Mr. Anderson, in my business, it's always been like this, or, you know, my audience, like I, I I'm, I'm, I'm a needlepoint expert. No one wants to buy anything that has to do with needlepoint. And mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, um, let's look at some facts and I'll Google how to do needlepoint and 25 million results will show up, you know, needlepoint yeah. 230,000 videos will show up. And I'm like, so are the 230,000 people who did videos wrong? Are the 25 million views on YouTube wrong? Or are you wrong? Well, it, I, but I, and then because at that, what's happening, the reason that they can't finish their sentence is because their brain is reconciling their stupidity. And so once you get that out of the way, then the real work begins. So that's, you know, that's what I do. I, I don't force anybody into anything other than to come to the most logical conclusion that they're the reason that they're not successful. Couldn't, couldn't agree anymore. And, you know, um, I ended up starting a business last year. Awesome. And before that, before that, I had always thought, oh, no, I can't do the business because of this. I can't do it because of that. Like, my mind couldn't actually perceive me working and doing it. When in reality, it's super simple. It's so simple. Like your mind just, it convolutes things. And mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, I think, I think you and Gary talked about this on your yeah. podcast. And it's just people's reality is, is people's reality. That's all they know. You know, and yeah. you can't, I mean, depending on, you can't really blame them. It's just their awareness and, mm -hmm. and how it extends. Um, and so when I was listening to your podcast, I mm -hmm. came across something that was really interesting to me. And mm -hmm. you talked about this thing called uh, the imposter syndrome. Yeah. Uh, can you just talk about what the imposter, what the, uh, excuse me, what the imposter syndrome is and mm -hmm. how to overcome that? Here's what it is. Everybody, Jay-Z says, everybody has a, a, a genius level talent. And mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in that. The problem is there's so many people who are successful in whatever it is that you want to do, and they've done so much, but you still have this level of expertise, this gift. You just haven't had the exposure yet. And so when you get to a level where your gift and your exposure start to get to a certain plateau, you feel like, I don't belong here with all these people. Yeah. And, and, and the truth of the matter is that's up here. No one knows how new you are at something as far as exposure goes. Nobody knows how much experience you have. If you've got a talent, you've got a talent. I got a two-year-old daughter. She's got an arm like a rocket. You, you know what I mean? So if she decides that she wants to do high-pitched softball, you know, she's going to be good at it. Some things are in eight, but you have to, um, you have to give yourself the opportunity to, to be great and stop worrying about who did what before you or who's more successful or who has more money. You either have it or you don't. And if you have it, don't be ashamed of it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for just saying that. Um, like I'm, I'm really young. I'm 20 years old. And oh, wow. Yeah. And like with my business, I started last year. Um, you know, like I really grinded, basically worked. Like I basically spent my entire life last year and up to now. Uh, you know, working on the business and now I'm starting to hire people and, you know, um, I'm meeting with clients, I'm traveling, all these different things. And it feels like I'm not, like something feels a little, it's like it, it hasn't clicked in my brain yet mm -hmm. and it makes, like, it makes me feel iffy. And I'm definitely proud of the things that I've accomplished, but it just feels like there's something that's not right and there's something that might go wrong. Is that is that imposter syndrome or is that something totally different? Here's here's the thing, especially Americans. Americans are are, are taught and conditioned to believe that the other shoe's going to drop. 
Wait, there's got to be a catch. If there's something, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. You know, sooner or later, you're going to get found out. You know, and and what I'm telling you is, you're 20. Have you had your birthday yet? No, not my 20th birthday. So next year, I'll be, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah I have. So next year, I'll be 21. Next year, you'll be 21, yeah. which means that when you were born, Michael Jackson was already your complexion. Um, yeah, you know, right. like, there's certain things, like, I'm twice your age, which is... Yeah weird for me to say because we're both adults and I don't feel that old. Um, but the, the one thing that I know is that it's all right. Like there will be mistakes. You will fail. There's something that's going to go wrong. And you, you know what I mean? Like here's, yeah. here's what kills me. America is a country that's built on mythology of heroes, mm -hmm. you know, and Every last one of these heroes that we love, like let's let's not even deal with the real heroes. Let's let's deal with fictional ones. I'm from Philly, so Rocky Balboa is a big one. Yeah. Um, Rocky in six movies, seven movies. The seventh one, he doesn't get his ass kicked because he's training. But the six movies, Rocky gets his ass kicked, and then he comes back. That's what he does. But Superman has Lex Luthor. You know, like if Superman didn't, if there was no kryptonite, then Superman would be boring. If there was no Lex Luthor, Superman would be boring. If there wasn't some crazy guy in the Mohawk saying, hey, Balboa, you running from it. There would be no reason to watch. It's the adversity that makes a story interesting. Who are you to think that you're above adversity? Who are you to think that it's not going to happen to you? And who are you to think that if it does happen to you, when? it does happen to you, that you're not strong enough to survive. You know, we've got to start shifting how we process the punch in the mouth. Everybody's got to take a punch in the mouth. You, me, everybody. I take them, yeah. and I don't like them, but I know they're coming. And so, therefore, what? Am I going to go home and cry? Like, yeah, probably, but I'll get up. <laughs> and, and, like, even in my young career, I've, I've noticed that failure is probably the best thing yeah. ever. You know, sometimes to go high, you've got to go uh, down low. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're, you know, we all fail. We've all, you know, we all get in bad moods. We're all unmotivated to do things. What are, what are some things, Dave, that, that, that you do when you feel you're ever unmotivated or you're a bad dude? Uh, what do you tell yourself, or does that just not happen to you? Oh my God, and that doesn't happen to me. I'm indestructible. No, of course it happens to me. There are days where I just don't feel like it. There are days where I'm overwhelmed. There are days where I'm literally like, I should just go get a job. To this, like, I'm like that now. Like, there are just days when that happens. Yeah. And you know what I do? What? I give into it. Mm. I give into it. Sometimes you get, you got to have your moment, man. Yeah. Now, you don't, you're not allowed to wallow in it, but you're allowed to have your moment. Mm. And then when you have your moment, you get up, you wipe your tears, you take a shower, you, 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 put, you put on some, you know, motivating music, and you get your ass up, and you get back in there, and you do what you're destined to do. Because it's, I wish I could tell you, um, honestly, Mark, that it was about me. Yeah. You know, here's what I know. When I was a kid, I, uh, my mother made me sit down and watch PBS. And on PBS, I saw this, this guy, a black guy with a beard, and there was a room full of white people, and he's telling them all these amazing things. You, you've got greatness within you. You got to be hungry. You know, nobody's coming. You got to get up and get it. You got to be hungry. You know, you're just waiting for an opportunity. You got to go get it. You got to be hungry. You deserve this. And I'm like, hey, I can do that. That was Les Brown. Yeah. That was not about Les Brown. That was about 12-year-old Dave Anderson seeing somebody who looked like him doing something that most people did not realize was possible. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for me seeing Les Brown in the Georgia Dome in front of uh, uh, 30,000 people, would I be talking to you? And then whose who's, who's life am I not affecting because I chose not to show up in my purpose? You know, and that's the important thing. You're not here for you. You're here for somebody else. Tupac said, I'm not saying that I'm going to change the world. I'm saying I'm going to spark the mind of the one who does. You know, and, and that's what it is. We're all out here. We're catalysts. We're batteries. We're, 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 we're jumper cables for other people's possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've got to show up. You're allowed to have your moment, but it can't be long. Dude, that's that was hold on. Dude, that was absolutely mind blowing, dude. <laughs> thank you so much, and oh, wow. thank you for bringing up Les Brown. I know, I know you worked with him. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, that, that's awesome. And I was actually, have you ever heard of the School of Greatness podcast with Lewis House? I haven't. I need to get on it. Dude, yeah. Les Brown went on his podcast mm-hmm. and Les talked about how people have uh, an internal monologue. They have an internalized yep. conflict mind. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the only thing that can break them out of that is another voice that's higher up. So Les talked about him doing that to you, and that's exactly what you just explained. Yep. And that's awesome. And that's like a very, very practical example of this. That's, that's mind-blowing. And I'm sure you're going to go on and do amazing things that was catalyzed by Les. And yeah. that's awesome. Yes. So, yeah. So, uh, Dave, you you said you're in the you're in the marketing, uh, branding, advertising. You do uh, different consulting work for mm-hmm. clients. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, and are you just doing this as like a, a one person thing, or are you doing this as an agency? Do you have like a team behind you? I have a team. I absolutely have a team. Like I'm a big believer that the biggest geniuses in the world have the biggest geniuses in the world behind them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you look at Jobs and Wozniak, you look at Zuckerberg and that army of nerds in Silicon Valley, you know, there's always somebody, you know, behind the, the muscle. I believe the hustle is just as important as the muscle. And for me, you know, I believe in helping great people be great at what it is that they do. I'm great at this. You know what I'm saying? I'm great at eyeball to eyeball. I'm great at simplifying big concepts, but I don't do it all. I do a lot. But I don't do it all myself. And I don't think you can build an empire one brick at a time. I think you need a foreman and you need some construction workers. (laughs) Absolutely. So, you know, let's say somebody wants to do what you do. Mm -hmm. What are like some practical, just like some really quick things that, that you've learned on your way that somebody can just keep in mind? Number one, Google is your best friend. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Here's the thing when, when, when you were born in what, 1997? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No. Um, that means the first president you've ever seen was Bill Clinton. Like, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> let, let me get back. Um, in 1995, Vice President Al Gore started talking about this thing called the Information Superhighway. I was a senior in high school. In 1997, I was a uh, sophomore in college, and I remember. You know, teachers were like, send me an email. Like, that's your homework. Send me an email. I'm like, what is this email thing? Now, people check their phone 63 times a day. There's more power in this device than what powered the first moon landing. Yeah. In in an iPhone 7, there's like 10 times the computing power. So every answer to every single question you could ever possibly ask, except for the intangibles, can be found on Google. Use this thing for more than fight videos and, 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 and uh, <laughs> Snapchat. Like, there's a lot you can do with this. Um, number two, don't be afraid to read. I read yeah. six books a week purposely. Six? Six. six. Wow. What? That's crazy. Huh? That's no, crazy. It's, it's crazy because you haven't disciplined yourself to do it. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? I come from radio. My background started in radio. That's how I learned how to do what I do. Ironically, Les Brown started in radio. Weird parallel. Um, I've learned that radio is one of the only media where you can do other things. You can cook while listening to the radio. You can have sex while listening to the radio. You can drive the whole night. Well, get Audible. AudibleTrial.com forward slash bully and go get yourself an audio book and start building your library. That's how I'm able to hammer out six books a week. The average book is uh, on Audible is maybe five hours. So, Mm. you know, two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening, next, you know? And and, and that's what you do because you have to realize what it is you need to learn is out there. And you never know when you're going to need it, you know? Uh, Number three, and I learned this from Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban gets credit for, you know, selling broadcast.com and all that good stuff. But people miss out on the fact that Mark Cuban sold powdered milk door to door. Mm-hmm. And then Mark Cuban would go work at a place in order to get free and paid training to learn something else. If you're going to take a job as an entrepreneur, you take a job to learn a skill. To this day, I'll go and take a job just because I want to learn something. I wanted to learn how to master software as a service. So I took a job uh, with uh, Comcast Universal to learn how to sell software as a service. And when I was done, I quit. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's wow. that's what you do. Those are things that you can do. It does not matter your background. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your economic status. It matters your ability to commit. Also, and this is the most important thing to me. Number four should have been number one. As hard as it mm-hmm. is, as tedious as it is, as lonely as it is, you must be consistent. If you're not consistent, you can't build an audience. You can't, you know, you can't build an, an empire. You have to show up. Every day, you have to tell people that you're here, and you have to give them more value than you give. So you got you got to be consistent, you know. And that's hard for a lot of people. So those are the things that I feel anybody can do. I don't care about your level of intelligence. I don't care about your grade point average. You can do that. You can be consistent. You can read. You can Google, and you know you can show up. I, I don't think it's hard. I just think it takes work and dedication. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, Gary talks about this point and like if you just look in the grand scheme of things, 2017 and the amount of technology that we have available today versus, you know, even my mom, you know, who uh, who grew up in Egypt, you know, she didn't like there was no way to, to work other than the job that you were given. You were so, you know, you're so narrowed down and like I almost feel obliged to utilize this technology to like my max potential as much as possible, just because like I happen to be born and you know, I happen to be living in this time frame of the earth and it's just completely mind blowing crazy. Um, yeah. Um, so your podcast is mm-hmm. absolutely awesome. Oh it's, God. Thank you. Like, I haven't, I haven't listened to a bunch of them. I've only listened to a couple, mm-hmm. but I love the content th- that you're bringing. And I started my podcast not too long ago. Mm-hmm. So I just, you know, I'm wondering, do you script them? Do you have, you know, topics in your head? Do you have questions prepared beforehand? Can you just walk me through, you know, any kind of preparation or the process for doing your podcast? Sure. I, uh, I, I get up, um, I plug in the microphone, I turn on the computer, and I go. Um, okay. <clears throat> in all seriousness, no, I don't script my podcast. Um, I may look at certain things. I may watch the news. It may be something that I saw like five minutes before, and I'll I'll run with it. Um, on my iPhone, there's you know there's a notes app. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of the notes app because I'll I'll write down little notes, things of that nature, stuff I want to touch on. Um, but I believe that with anything, and I learned this when I was 13 years old. I tell stories because stories stick. So forgive me. Um, I got an opportunity to speak for the first time in front of an audience. Um, it was the Hugh O'Brien Youth Foundation. I was 13 years old. The crowd was 17, 18 years old, and they wanted me to teach them how to um, prepare for college. And I'm like, I'm still in middle school. <laughs> but I was on the radio. I was on TV. So, like, apparently that's impressive to people, whatever. Um, and I was told um, to, you know, script my, uh, script my speech. And I did, and then I did the joke. You know how like every speaker has a joke in the middle of their speech? Yeah. I got stuck after the joke because I wasn't ready for the laughter, and the laughter made me lose my place. And that was the first and only time I wrote a speech. Mm -hmm. So what I realized is if you're going to take any notes, take bullet points, structure your show. Like, okay, this is the part where I'm going to talk about current events, and this is the part where I'm going to do interviews. This is the part where I'm going to do Q&A, and then this is the part I'm going to uh, give feedback, talk about whatever, call to action, and go on about your business. I feel like anything other than that eliminates your ability to be in the moment. You know, Mm -hmm. so whether I'm doing a podcast or whether I'm speaking to a crowd, you know, I don't script anything. Whatever comes out of my mouth is what comes out of my mouth. When you asked me a question, you said, oh, that was great. I was like, really? I just, (laughs) (laughs) you know what I mean? I don't, I don't prepare. I I feel like if you know your subject matter, you shouldn't have to prepare. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I'm at, at the beginning of my podcast. I like tried to script it. I tried to do like all these things came out awful. Uh, if you, you know, you watch my first podcast, it was very bad, but I've improved since then and I'm, I'm still trying to get better. I'm trying my hardest. And you know, I find that topics like little bullet points, like just on my phone work exponentially better, you know, cause I'm not trying to remember what I said, but I should just let it, you know, flow out. Cause like you said, if you know it, then you can just, you can talk it. Yep. So I want to get on to some of the questions that some of my audience members asked. Awesome. With you. So uh, Justin from the Get Your Grind Up podcast asked, what is the youngest and dumbest thing you have ever done in a sales call? And what did you learn from it? 
<laughs> the youngest and dumbest thing I've ever done in a sales call. Justin, great question. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, um, the my I would say probably I was like 17 years old, uh, maybe 18. And I worked in the Smiley Times building selling uh, subscription newspapers um, mm -hmm. over the phone, telemarketing. And there was a guy and he wanted uh, he wanted newspapers uh, not only for his home but for his stores, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I said, "Okay, hold on." And I go and I, I get a supervisor and I explain, "The guy wants this and wants that." And he was like, "Okay, get up, kid. I'll handle it." And well, he handled it all right. He got the commission, and I didn't. Wow. Never walk away from your phone. <laughs> that, that's one. Number two, write the order up first. <laughs> you yeah. know. So I didn't, I didn't understand that sales was cutthroat. I just thought that, you know, even people in supervisory positions are there to help because that's what I would have done. So my, my youngest, dumbest mistake in sales on that sales call was, number one, I relinquished my power. I realized that, that sales was cutthroat. Number one, I should never relinquish my power. Uh, number two, I should never think that people are going to do what I do. You know, sometimes we view the world through how we would handle everything. And some of us are more evolved than others and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but you have to think, okay, let's deal lowest common denominator, expect nothing and you're never disappointed, but realize that people are not going to operate from the loving place that you and I might operate from, yeah. you know? And I think that that's what it is, but write the deal up first, get it done, <laughs> and then worry about the specifics later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that was awesome. So uh, the next question we have here is from Andrew Haley. Uh, what's the worst advice you've ever gotten? The worst advice I've ever gotten and the, the advice that makes me curse people out to this day mm. is stick to one thing. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in sticking to one thing because they'll tell you a jack of, a jack of all trades is a master of none. Mm. And... I'll say a jack of all trades is a captain of industry, you know? Yeah. And it, 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 during my podcast with Gary Vee, and I don't know if you've heard the whole thing. Yeah, I have. I, you know, I'm a big believer in I don't care who you are, I'm going to ask the question. I don't care if you're worth $200 million. You're sitting down yeah. with me, you're getting this work. And Absolutely. so I said, Gary, you tell people, you know, LeBron, just ball, 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 Beyonce, sing and dance. You know, I'm like, but you've got Vayner Sports, you've got Wine Library, you've got Vayner Me, you've got all of these things. How can you reconcile that? And he yeah. said very simply, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly what he said, but I don't know. It was something to the effect of, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, and, you know, all of those things fall within my game. You know, I don't step outside of that. And I was like, that's a fair point. I can't argue that. Yeah. yeah. People love to put their limitations on other people and expect that you only rise to the level of what they see possible for themselves. Because if you go beyond that, they'll either tell you you're crazy or they'll hate you for it. And I'm a big believer that when I die, my kids should be able to have surpassed what I was doing. You know, and if that's not how you operate, you need to get a new operating system. I, I believe that the worst thing you can do is tell somebody, do one thing and do it well. You know, that's the reason that Michael Jordan sucks at baseball, because he doubled down so hard on basketball after getting cut from the team. But had he worked at his baseball game every time he was shooting a jump shot, you know, he might have been Bo Jackson, who never gets the credit he deserves, or Deion Sanders, who played offense and defense and baseball. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we put limits on ourselves based upon other people's comfort levels. Mm -hmm. Stop that. You live in a different time than your mom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And what your mom went through was, was, was phenomenally horrible. But yeah. if she hadn't gone through it, I don't think you have the appreciation that you have for the time in which you live. And yeah. so we have to remember that their, their past is not our future because we have a different game we're playing. Absolutely. So that's, that's how I feel. That was beautifully well said. So, uh, Ved Petrie asks, do you have any mantra or saying that gets you amped up? Wow, do I have several. Um, my father would say, trouble south, go north, trouble east, go west. Meaning, you have to be prepared to shift whenever you can. 
You know, if yeah. there's an obstacle, go around it. You can't go around it. Go over it. If you can't go over it, go under it. If you can't go under it, go through it. If you can't go through it, find a new place. But keep pushing. Um, my mother always told me, expect nothing and you're never disappointed, which means that if you get something, it's a win because you're, you're coming from a base of bottom. No matter how successful I am, I'm still at the bottom. Like, I'm still climbing. Um, one thing that I will tell you, and this is hard, and, and every time I talk about it, I can feel tears welling. Wow. Um, when I wound up being homeless and the entire radio industry pretty much abandoned me. Yeah, I lived in my truck. And wow. when you listen to my show, you'll find this out. I lived in my truck for a while and then wound up working at a credit card processor to make money. And I would wash up in a gas station sink. You know, um, I really felt like I was left for dead. And I got into a place and I, I closed the door, that, that bathroom in that quick trip on 360 and carrier in Arlington, Texas, just a spitz throw from six flags. And I remember saying to myself, they thought you were dead. They left you in a ditch. They thought you were asleep, but I'm awake and I'm coming. And, and I say that now, like I'm coming, I will not stop. Like you can think you're gonna get rid of me. I will come back like a bad herpes infection. I'm not giving up like i don't know what it's going to take i don't know if i'll ever see the promised land i don't know if i'm ever going to get to where i feel like i told gary be like look i took a greyhound up here dude like i make great money but i'm not you know i'm not balling up like i don't fly private i wish i could but i'm not there yet and gary's like it doesn't matter and i'm like yeah it doesn't matter but when's it my turn you know what i mean like when do i get there and so i hold on to this thing that i'm never going to get there everything that i love when i was a kid Everybody I love had this thing that just never got resolved. You know, um, when I was way before your time, there was a show called Quantum Leap. And mm -hmm. Quantum Leap is a great show. You should check it out if you ever get an opportunity. It's about this guy who gets stuck in a machine. And then he goes throughout, um, the machine has a glitch, but he goes throughout time in other people's bodies trying to rewrite history and make it better for humanity. And at the end of like five seasons, you find out that he never leaps home. Like he just spends eternity fixing history's problems. You know, Gilligan never got off the island if you don't count those god awful movies. They're, they're, I feel like you have to constantly be in a state of dissatisfaction. I'm proud of everything I've ever done. I'm proud of every award I've ever gotten, every person I've ever touched, every podcast anyone's ever listened to. Um, I'm proud of all of my accomplishments, but I don't live there. I live in what's next. I'm coming. You will not stop me. I am destined. If I got breath in my lungs, move because I'm going to bowl you over. That's what keeps me going. If I don't have that, then I don't have anything. So that's that's my thing. Like I'm coming. I'm I'm awake. I'm alive. Like you will not stop me. I will keep getting up. You can keep hitting me. I'm going to keep coming. You know, as an entrepreneur, you need that because no one else is going to save you from you. You have to save yourself. Yeah, I think this might be one of the best podcast episodes ever. Oh, God um, bless you. You're only 14 in, kid. Give yourself time. <laughs> yeah. So, Dave, I want, to start, I want to start wrapping up here. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your book and where people can get that? Wow. Um, which one? I've got several. Uh, pitch, Close, Up, Sell, Repeat? Yeah, that's the one that I know. Yeah. Um, pitch, Close, Up, Sell, Repeat basically gets out of the way all the dumb excuses I've heard about people. I'm not a salesperson. So I'm going to test this theory. You and I have not ever had a conversation until just now, correct? Yeah. You and I have never been in the same room, right? Right. As far as you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to ask some questions. Um, um, do you date? Yeah. Okay. Are you seeing somebody seriously? No. Have you seen someone seriously before? Yeah. Okay. Um, ever had consensual sex? Yeah. Okay. Um, ever got your mom to buy you a toy after she told you she wasn't buying you a damn thing? Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. You're one of the best salespeople on the planet. <laughs> People act like they're afraid of sales because they've been told to be afraid of sales, that sales is evil, but everything comes down to a sale. These things move so well, not because they're so great, but there's a system in place to sell them. They barely advertise. They do some, but the majority of advertising comes on the six o'clock news. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you have a process, when you have a methodology, 
um, by which to operate, things take care of themselves. You can go into a gas station, put $10 down on pump one and say, oh, look, Reese's Cups, congratulations, you've been upsold. If you're going to McDonald's and, and they say, hey, you want to supersize that or get two pies for 99 cents? Congratulations, you've been upsold. A um, burger in uh, McDonald's burger in Wisconsin tastes the same as one in Nashville, tastes the same as one in Memphis, tastes the same as one in Indochina because there is a process. Pitch, close, upsell, repeat. As long as you're able to do that, you'll be good. And that's what the book is about. I'm sick of people acting like you can do business and not sell. Selling is important. The other thing is you don't need to learn how to sell like somebody else. You need to learn how to sell like yourself and what your unique sales voice is. And I think that that's extremely important. So that's, uh, you know, that's why the book is still on the bestseller list because people resonate with it. That, and it's only like 75 pages. I don't write long books. I write impactful books. That's awesome. How long, how long did, did that take for you to write? Uh, I wrote pitch close up. So repeat, I say in about a month. Wow. That's dude. Good job, man. You're a hustler. Hey, man. <laughs> so I, I have one final question for you before we wrap up. If you were talking to somebody that you know, wants to do what you do, what are some, a couple of pillars, some few core elements that are the foundation of your mind, of your, of your success? I trust me more than anything else other than God himself. I, I trust me. I, I trust that I'm going to do the right thing, not only for my clients, but for my reputation. Does that mean that I don't make mistakes? No. Does that mean that some people aren't happy? No. I'm, I'm realistic about that, but I'm not realistic about my potential. You understand the difference? Like, I'm really big on making sure that people get as much as they possibly can. And I know that realistically, I'll never be a Speedo swimsuit model. I'm okay with that. But that doesn't mean that I can't model. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, have, you have to know where you are. But my potential to be great hasn't even been tapped yet. I'm only 40. I just turned 40 like last week, week before last. You know, I got like at least another 40 years in me. Man, listen, I started at nine. By the time I'm 80, whoo, boy, Warren Buffett, watch out. So I think that that's important. I think also um, be willing to say, I don't know. Hmm. The three most powerful words in the English language to me are, I need help. The three most crippling words in the English language are, I got this. We all need somebody. We all need a team. You don't, you don't get extra points. You don't get extra cheese on your burger for trying to do it all yourself. What you, what you get is a, a, a crash course and fail. You know, know what you're good at. Do that. Hire for everything else. You know, and don't wait. I gotta say this because this is important, and I don't mean to take up much of your time, but I gotta say this. Go ahead. Friends and family was a great phone plan. Don't expect friends and family to understand your destiny, especially when it's different from theirs. My mom, teacher, stepfather, teacher, grandmother, teacher, father, cop, brother, cop, aunt and uncle, cop, entrepreneur, speaker, radio personality. Do you understand? I'm different. I'm Marilyn Munster. If you've ever seen the Munsters, you know, Marilyn Munster was this gorgeous girl and her family was Frankenstein, the bride of Frankenstein, a, 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 a wolfman little brother, a, a daggone vampire grandpa, and she's walking around gorgeous. But in her family, she's the ugly one. Mm. A lot of us are the ugly ones in our family because people don't understand who we are called to be. And it's different from everybody else. When you're spectacular, you're different from everybody else. Be okay with that. You don't need, they're not your judge. Your audience is out there. There's 8 billion people on the planet and you focusing on 20? <laughs> Man, please. Dude, that was, that was mind blowing. So uh, thank you everybody for watching. Dave Anderson, you are the man. You are a legend, man. You are going, you know, Les Brown has, has got to watch out, man. You, he's got competition. Uh, where can people find you, your, your book, your podcast? 
Absolutely. Um, my uh, my podcast, of course, is the Business Bully Podcast. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe and please rate it. Like I'm begging people to rate the show. Like yeah. I, even if you don't like it, you know, put a five star review up and then trash the hell out of me. Just <laughs> you know, put the five star review up and then talk about hot garbage. And I guarantee you, if you don't like my show and you put up a five star review, I will read it, even if it's horrible. Even if you talk about my mama. Um, on top of that, you can always text two words "business bully" to three one nine nine six. That's business bully to three one nine nine six. And my website is businessbullyshow.com. Um, and as always, man. Um, I'm always a phone call or an email away, David businessbullyshow.com. Instagram, Facebook, the business bully, Twitter, and uh Snapchat DA Business Bully. So that's me, man. Wow, awesome. Dave, thanks for coming on and thank you everyone for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Humans 2.0 podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there and you chose to listen to this. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about Humans 2.0 so they can improve as well. If you loved listening to that, I would love your feedback whether you're watching this on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and anything else. Keep learning on the Humans 2.0 podcast.